what work did you do in 45 and 46 I before didn't you do came? nothing was there no work available? no work is that why you came no to work England? wasn't there for us is that why you came to yes. England at the time all ex-servicemen was always the number one for a job. Mm -hmm. Anywhere, the ex-servicemen mm -hmm. Lot of them that I were in the army with, some what was still home, you go, they're working at prison. Prisons. I didn't get no work there. They didn't have no work there. Some what get to work at prison. They come first for a job. They come first wants to go to America from working. That they test your blood. You see, but like me of South and Phillips and South and, mm -hmm. and many more. Well, mm -hmm. plenty who for farm work mm -hmm. to America and <coughs> Canada. And the easiest thing that fail you to don't go to America, they accept you. The two things, and too soft, and your blood test, yeah. and you can't handle my shit mm. or anything like that. Some things here in England as well, for jobs and what, and they look at your hands. If your hands are too soft, that means you're not a worker. You're not a grafter, you see. I mean, there was a television program, and uh, is this young child got locked in a bank, and they were asking for people to come to work to help to try to dig the child out and so on. Right. And they've got a priest, and when people come, they just present their hands like that. No, you're no good. Yeah, you can go soft hands or hard hands, you see. Huh? You come first. All the government job them with some get to work at prison. Hmm? You didn't want them jobs. Prison. Well, wouldn't. at the time, no. Well, I did have the and if mostly was to go to prison, the world. But after I come to myself, I said Jamaica is too slow. That's my idea and many more. And it's too cheap. Well, I never passed to go to America. Even a woman sent for me there. Nothing there in West Virginia where is a more race city in America. In, and the bus plenty where they lock up all the women was a big thing here. Mm -hmm. Because she wouldn't give up the seat yeah. or move back. And what get me the Sunday night where I was going and I just feel was a feeling bright <clears throat> and no mate wasn't with me. I just feel to go back to base. And the time I jump on the bus, I go too far up in the bus. I'm a soldier, you know. And I go up and sit down where I should pay my money before. Mm. Yes. And the driver. Hey, boy. They use that plenty there, you know. Mm. Hey, boy. I was vexed. <coughs> or anything like that. I'm bad enough, like many more of my people there. Is, were you talking about Rosa Parks? In America. Yeah. So the same thing that happened to her happened to you. They made you move seats. It happened to a lot of people. It happened to a lot of people. And they did And they are hey boy. Mm -hmm. just, just, uh, How did you deal with it then? All you, you have to do what did happen to me. It wasn't such a great thing. A bit of it was my mistake. And we were well, and this race eight 
in the state. But it didn't go for me, like, and we soldiers. I was in uniform, you know, and I'm soldier. Just didn't feel good, and I'm going back to base, and I just said, feel fed up. You see, what it is, what he's saying is that because they're in uniform, they're classed as British soldiers. So therefore, when they go to America, they don't get treated like the black Americans yeah. because they come under British authority. They say that these are King George's niggers. They said these are King George's niggers. Yes, you've got to serve them. Affect us. Yeah, you've got to serve them. <laughs> As where black Americans are going, they won't get served. But these what they call King George's niggers, you have to serve them. This is the police. I mean, you're going back to 1943, you know what I mean, you see, because they're British soldiers, you have to serve them, never mind the black, you have to serve them. We have a lad, a Smith, a Jamaica, and he's well feared, and he pushes himself most, but he's white, he's a Jamaican, and he was a lance corporal, live in the same tent. And um, Richard from St. Towns and his good friend. They're trying to pose on him like he don't support to where we are and wait. They force it. Because but he have not got that mm -hmm. in him. Mm -hmm. He's a Jamaican. Mm -hmm. You understand yeah. that? <laughs> and Richard them and we how they're going here like him not alone. But he's a white man, <laughs> and he, he he ready to fight with us. Exactly, yeah. he's ready to live in the same tent. Yeah. I, I remember they try pull it off in Jeffrey's bar, down Jefferson Avenue, where we went in, and that's where I met this American woman girl. And I, she says to me. What is he doing with you? <laughs> to David Smith. I said, don't worry about that. He's like me. I said, he's the same. <laughs> she was surprised, jump up. What is he doing with you? Uh, not him alone. It's many more white we are with, we are now. Is a, and private soldier to and corporal. And, Smith was only a lance corporal at the time. <laughs>
Mm. It gets all popular and everything. Yeah, because that, but that house, know, it was, it was um, always busy. You remember Hoggy? Hoggy. You don't remember Hoggy, David? No. You know old Hoggy? She's Irish. Did live in that back room. No, I don't remember. You remember Mitch, where you used to fight? Mitch. Aggie and Mitch. You don't remember. No, David no. would know him older than you. And yeah. Aggie and Mitch was an American top sergeant. Well, Aggie told me about it. Mm. She said, oh, here is all right. When Mitch is here, everything is all right. But when Mitch is not here, something wrong. The ghosts, I go there to sleep before I bring them down from Wishing. Prescott. Yeah. And it happened to me. Because, I was fighting like hell. And when he bought the house, uh, there was no electric in there at the time. Mm -hmm. It was only them old gas light mm -hmm. at the time. And I remember them taking out all the gas pipes and fitting the electric in. You see. Why well, have to wire all them houses? Rewire everything. everything. So I don't know. Yeah. How many houses did you buy in Liverpool? I think you Do you one. remember? Berkeley Street, two in Eversley, two in Mulgrave, about oh, five, five houses. And this one? And this one, yes, six. Mm. One nightclub we had in the late 60s. And what was that called again? The West Indian Social Club. And uh, yeah, it was called the West Street. He had a clothes shop. That for a while. He'd done very good. He's done very good. Not like all the other guys work for the money and then go to the pub and drink out the money. You know, he was very shrewd fella. Very shrewd. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He'd done very well for himself. What was, what is your favourite experience of being here in Liverpool? Very great for me. Very great. Very great England for me. Very great. No complaint about England. I'm happy about England. No regrets. No regrets at all. What is the best thing that's happened to you since you've been here? Everything is the best for me in England. I got a good job, what I was happy in, and was well treated in the job. And it's that make me here, the job what I was in at the British Insulated Kalinda Cable Work. Well, I don't know if it make me ill, but age make me ill. <laughs> age make me ill. I get a good job and I was well picked it and I was well told off by the head boss, Fred Cleaver. Was it peace work? Well, Oh, did I delight it one that man speak to me and look at my papers for? And he says to me, Anyone said anything to you, I'll be anything. Come right up in this office to me. Yes, speak to me, God. And he was well annoyed with me. Why? Because I don't comply with what he said. I lose three days. And is he same one again I'm telling you in this office? He said, Escoffrey, I told you this dangly. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm telling you. Fred Cleaver. He said, I told you. Right in this office here. And he was annoyed with me. He said, all the right is in my hand.
And who do I do it for? And lose three days, babe. Because <laughs> <laughs> he beat somebody up. I don't. I was well treated in the British insulated Kalinda cable. You still got an overall from there now? <laughs> so, and I was all right, don't mind who talk against me or behind me, white man. I always have a next one to come and tell me. Mm. So you had good friends yeah. there? Yeah. Just